Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the beautiful Royal Pines and ADAPT's seventh annual cloud and data center gathering. For our journey to the edge this week, 45 experts from around the world are here to deliver 24 keynotes, four panel sessions, 11 closed door workshops, all around the theme of how to architect resilient digital infrastructure. I really see attempting to build more resiliency around how the application is designed rather than how you build servers or how you build data centers as being the key to success. And then from a real business continuity and resiliency standpoint, on top of that, it's talking about, thinking about holistically how to apply security and from a sustainability standpoint, how to keep the team you have progressing and evolving so that they can continue to adapt and move forward with the business as technology continues to change and accelerate. People need to recognise that things are changing and figure out how they can embrace it. So move your ERP to the cloud. Inevitably, all the people who supported the infrastructure previously, the people who supported the application, customised it, they're sort of no longer around. That's, that's just one of the, the, the sad facts. But when, when you look at it in terms of the resilient, resilience and reliability and the forever relentless modernisation of those platforms, it, it's really the only choice. I use this phrase, um, cloud provides the freedom to be remarkable. It's something I coined maybe eight or nine, ten years ago now, but at the end of the day, if you can achieve what you're wanting to achieve without fear of failure or fear of success, without having to worry about what the infrastructure is going to be, then that's cloud. But, um, and that can be on-premise or off-premise. How do we also provide new opportunities for our workforce to get their hands on new technology uh, that is out there as part of our training programs and investments in our people. We're seeing projected growth of 12% on year on year in the Australian data centre market. We're seeing data centres consuming 4% of the energy in the national electricity market at the moment. And projections are that in 2025 they're going to consume 20% of the global energy demand. Data is now also starting to drive renewable energy. So we're seeing much smarter renewable energy with the smarter inverters, battery integration into more traditional wind and, and, and um, sort of solar panels. So we're seeing those two things go hand in hand. And the next thing, of course, is trying to power these data centers through renewables. And the challenge there really is a data center needs very reliable power 24-7. It's about uh, innovation as well. And when I say about innovation, it's, you know, uh, it's, an, it's a playground for the people to come and to explore their ideas. And what is it that technology can't do for us? And, and I believe that the fundamental to that is that our technology doesn't care about us. It has no capacity for meaningful human emotions. We can get it to pretend. We can get it to, uh, you know, to, to uh, synthesize what a real human would do, but it's not real. They don't care and never will care about us. And so I think that that's what we ultimately shift towards is that the next iteration of what it means to be human is tied to that ability to have compassion and, and form relationships with people. Now, if you look at where the cables run in Australia and how they're linked to the rest of the world, there really is a real opportunity for um, regional data centres. And if you're looking for one example, uh, just take Queensland. I wouldn't have thought the Sunshine Coast was a hotbed of cable connectivity, but it is now, because the Sunshine Council has paid, I believe, £35 million to essentially bring a sea cable directly into um, a cable landing station on the coast. Their view is that will give them an economic benefit of close to a billion dollars. So I think once you actually start to look at the opportunities that these new um, systems provide and that the regional benefits, I think that's when people will stand back and take a very different view of data centre location and operation in Australia. Harnessing those simple uh, pieces of information around specific locations, uh, combining that perhaps with uh, where the ambient temperature uh, has, is much cooler because we've got trees planted reflects why we need to move towards a heavily vegetated urban environment uh, that gives a much better experience. We have to look at what we do and challenge how we do it. So open minds and looking to your, to your people to bring those ideas and to contribute. You've got to bring your people along on this journey. Um, 
and some adapt to it very quickly, some don't. So take those that adapt and show what can be done. With it.